So Rupak, tell me more about Habu and how you're using Snowflake today. Absolutely. So we are a we are a small startup. We are based in San Francisco. Our, uh, we also have offices in other parts of the country. Uh, we started working with Snowflake a couple of years ago, actually. And at that time, Data Clean Room, so Habu is a data clean room software company. Uh, we allow data collaboration in a privacy safe manner. Uh, it makes it very scalable. So we started working with Snowflake a couple of years ago. We actually are the first clean room provider on Snowflake. So we built the first, uh, you know, and this was the pre-app world in Snowflake. And then we were very excited to be part of the the Snowflake app ecosystem. We came up with the V1 uh, app, and now we are also in the marketplace for V2. So for our viewers, tell me what exactly is a data clean room? A data clean room, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a loaded word, I would say, because if you search for it, there are a lot of different you know, explanations of it. But if you think from Habu's perspective, data clean room is a place where multiple partners can collaborate on their data without giving direct access to each other. A simple example is, let's say you have CRM data and I have transaction data. Uh, gone are the days when uh, I, I used to give transfer my data to you or expect you to give me your data. So Data Clean Room provides an environment where me and you can collaborate, can share the data in a privacy safe manner with the governance built in, but the results can be shared so that we can get the value of the combined analysis. So it's a pretty important aspect to be able to not give the data away but be able to have access and use that data in a privacy uh, concerned manner. How does Snowflake fit into that picture for you guys? So Snowflake, I would say, is the best partner because Snowflake does this a lot, right? Data collaboration, data sharing is in the wheelhouse of Snowflake. You know, uh, one of the things that's made Snowflake really great is I never had to copy my data over and send it to someone else. I could easily share it, I could unshare it, I could put all the governance. So Snowflake actually has built something which is which is similar. Uh, what we have done is we have taken what Snowflake has given and we have scaled it up. Now you can, at Habu, we have hundreds of collaborations going on with a click of a button and we have done all that with the help of Snowflake. Fantastic. So Snowflake recently came out with a public preview for native applications. Tell me, how is Habu using native applications today? Yeah, absolutely. So. Native app has, has been actually a game changer. So in our, prior to native app, actually we, we worked with Snowflake for more than two years now. And prior to native app, we actually had a CLI. It's a command line interface that we had to give our clients and they had to install it in their Snowflake environment. And with the native app now, it's a click of a button. They click a button and it's all installed. All the stored procedures are there, it's all there. So native app has been very easy to install. That has been uh, very useful. And then I'm actually very excited about the recent announcements of about the container services. Yes. Yeah, that's that's something that because we would love, for example, not just have the native app install the thing, but actually have using the container services, you know, and also bring the app to where the Snowflake is. Perfect. I love that. You know, so so tell me more about um, from a high level architecture. You know, how does changing from a connected app or a traditional SaaS app to a Snowflake native application? How does that architecture change with the with this new native application paradigm? Yeah, that that's a good question. I think uh, with the way the native app has been built, I think Snowflake has taken a lot of you know they are they are taking privacy and you know governance into in you know into that entire framework. Uh, the way we think of it is, it helps to get through some of the security and questions that come from our clients and prospects. So Snowflake has made a made it really easy for us to bring the apps into the framework, into their infrastructure with the privacy built in. Uh, one example I'll give you is, uh, so Habu has a product called Clean Compute, where one side used to get a container, the other side used to get, a, get data. And within the Clean Compute product, we used to apply, and it could be machine learning models also, you could apply both of them and the results were produced. Now with this container services and all, it is more native to Snowflake. So we would love to use some of these capabilities of Snowflake so that it's, it's built natively on Snowflake. Perfect. And you know, I love the fact that you can bring the compute closer to that data, right? You, like you said, you get the, the, the native security aspects that Snowflake has built in. Uh, you have those, uh, that better optimization, bringing that compute closer to the data. You get lower latency, et cetera. So tell me more about, um, you know, how you built this as a native app. Um, and you know, you mentioned you've been working with Snowflake for the last two years. 
uh, kind of building this the, this native app and working with us. T tell me about some of the, how that process went um, yeah. and that and how yeah. you chose to do that. Yeah, absolutely. So when we started working with Snowflake, native app was uh, was I think was a concept at that time. So we we actually built our command line interface. It was a Python module which you could download and you could install it and all that. And as you know, with all these things, if it you know there are there are you know developers will go in they will download it but different versions of python this so it it's it's quite we had to handhold them a bit so when the native app v1 uh, when that was conceptualized we were very excited about it because now we could build an app and with the click of a button in the snowflake environment they could just click it and all the installations happen so we have done that now with v2 we we are in the marketplace we are integrated with the v2 we are still uh, the interesting thing is our a clean room is a slightly different product than your standard uh, app builders because in app builders typically you will have a database or something that you want to share to your partners and it's it's a much simpler here we are collaborating so both sides have to be on uh, using native apps and all so that makes it very interesting so we are actually working with the with the native app team and we are i think pushing some of the boundaries some of the some of the edges of uh, of how we can use the product that's great that's great so let's see a demo of this yeah absolutely let's do that before we get into the clean rooms uh, the first thing that I'll show you is the establishment of data connections. This is where you you create a new data connection. This is where you can connect to a Snowflake table. You can connect to a AWS S3, which can be brought as an external table into the platform. So it's very simple to do. You can create a new data connection, and I've you know I've already created one. So this is like a Snowflake table. You can just give it a the database name, the schema, and the table view name, and where this processing is going to happen. So you can just create a Snowflake table with that. Once you've done that, what we do is we never read your data. We don't have access to your data, we, but we read your metadata. So we know what the columns look like. So for example, here, if you look at one of these Snowflake tables. So these are all the columns that we have read. This is all the metadata of the Snowflake that we have. Now what you can do is, at this, you can, you can say, I never want to get person ID and made MD5 into the, into the clean room. So this is basically a column level filtering that you can apply at this level. So once you've established a data connection, I think the next thing is about going to clean room. So let's go to a clean room, uh, and I will go into one example of a clean room. Uh, so just uh, when you edit a clean room, you can give it a name, you can give description, you can give it a start and end date, and you can choose your Snowflake account. Once you've done that, we have what we call differential privacy parameters here. So there are, there's something called what we call data decibel and crowd size. So data decibel, think of it as a noise injection. So let's say you want to make sure that anybody who is trying to access your data, even in the final analysis, you want it to be add noise to that because you don't want exact numbers to go. So you can apply through the slider some noise injection. You can also do crowd sizing where what you want to say is you want to say, don't give data back unless it's above a certain value. So that's what we allow you to do it. Uh, there are all these other, other parameters that you can use when you configure a clean room. Now, once you have configured a clean room, now let me go into a clean room. So let's go into this clean room. So now here, I'll first go to data sets. Remember, we have created a data connection. Here, you have additional ability to bring the data connection in and apply even more filtering if you want. So one example is, let's say you brought this table, and let's say you, now also you can do column level filtering. But you can also do row level filtering. You can basically say where campaign ID in and you can give it a filter value. So this allows you complete control of what data actually gets into a clean room. Now I'll get out of the, uh, let's, let's go to questions. So this is where I think, uh, actually before we go to questions, there's one very interesting thing that we have done is how do you bring your partners in? Because that's, clean room is all about collaboration. So what we have done is, we have a very simple workflow where you can just type your partner name, the email, and you, this sends them an email, and the entire workflow from their side comes in, and you're able to collaborate very easily with the clean room. Now comes the, the meat of, now you have done all the setup. Now comes the meat of the demo where, now I want to do an analysis, right? I want to figure out, now we, I have data sets from both me and my partners, how do I do the analysis? So that's where we have this concept of questions. Where, and these questions can be of multiple types. You can have list questions where the output is actually user list, and that also with the with help of your partners, you can make sure that these, these are the lists that you want to expose or come out as a result of the clean room, or there are analytical questions. So I'll go to one of these analytical questions. So let's say, uh, let's go to this one. 
So if you see these allow you to write any SQL and one thing I would like to say here is you can write the SQL with your existing data sets. These are data sets that you brought in, your partner brought in. But what we have done is we have also created this concept of templates. So let's say you want to say I want to get transaction data but you don't know what your partner's transaction data will actually look like. You can still create a SQL with macros for transaction even with the fields. For example, you can say transaction needs to have a start date right, or a transaction date. But your partner may have the column defined as X, Y, Z or something else. What they can do is they can do the mapping later on. They can still use the same template, but the mapping can be done later on. So that's something that we have done. Uh, and uh, one, one additional thing that I would say is, remember the, the differential privacy parameters. What you can do now is at the question level, when you're defining these measures, you can actually say, you know what, for impressions, I want to make sure you apply k-min, but don't worry about noise. Or you can say apply both of them. So we have, uh, we have allowed the question builders to control which measures they want to apply these differential privacy parameters. Once you have run these reports, so let's say you, you can run these reports by you know, creating a new report, you can give it a name. We also have a concept of runtime parameters where when you create a SQL, you can say for running the SQL, I need these parameters and these parameters can go, go here. One quick uh, aside I would say is uh, what we have also done, and this is very cool, this happened uh, recently actually, where you can now, we support full Python. This is Snowpark in the platform. So you can write your code, we do all the checks and all that, and this is where I think some of the work that, that, uh, that Snowflake is doing, it's, yeah. it's, pretty, it's pretty impressive. You can bring your own packages here, so you can actually write an entire, uh, all the code that you want here, and not, you're not constrained by just the SQL. This is phenomenal and an incredibly powerful platform that you've built. Absolutely, I think we are, we are super excited and thanks to Snowflake, I think there's a lot, a lot of synergies there. So once you have created uh, a report, you can schedule reports, you can create a new run and I'll just go to a, a quick uh, report, let's go to this report. Uh, and you will see this is our internal you know, UI where you can see these reports, but what we are really excited about is we have an embedded BI environment where what you can do is you can create dashboards that you want and these are across all your different questions. You can connect it across different clean rooms and you can create these dashboards where you can look at this data and, uh, and one recent addition that we are very excited about is you know you can't have a demo without generative AI. So one of the things that we have done is we have, uh, we have concept of an alert. So what this does is we are actually giving the generative AI platform, a little bit of the schema, and we are asking it what are the kind of alerts and KPIs that I should monitor. So it gave me some of these, you know, it gave me about five of them, and I can now ask a question, and I can say, can you elaborate on the, and you will see it will go in, it will give me more information about it, and then what I can also do is I can say, hey, can you write a SQL for this and propose an alert? So now what happens is these alerts are created in a platform, and anytime these thresholds are reached, the users are notified from there. That's incredible. So this is this is a quick quick tour of the Habu platform. So tell me about the history of Habu. When were you founded? Uh, kind of talk about your growth trajectory. Yeah, absolutely. We actually are a Series B company. Snowflake Ventures uh, is is part of our investors, also Wing and also Norvest. We are we are growing. Uh, we have uh, we have a lot of different collaborations. You know, some of our clients are like Disney. Kroger, 8451 is there. We also have Pepsi, we also have LinkedIn. So we are very excited to be part of this collaboration journey with a lot of these uh, huge enterprises. That is really exciting to have that type of growth, uh, those types of investors, um, and some of those customers, those, that's, that's phenomenal. So Rupak, great demo. Tell me more about how Snowflake fits into some of those different rules that you've built, you know, you, you, you showed how Snowpark is yep. directly integrated with your product and obviously with Snowflake. Tell me more about some of those integrations uh, and why you chose Snowflake to build this platform. Absolutely, I think, so Snowflake has some of the, I would say the primitives that Snowflake has were just the right primitives for us. So I'll give you examples where uh, Snowflake has streams and tasks, right, where you can, you can have a process and then the, the, you know, can put it in the stream, the task will pick it up. So what we have done is we have used those primitives as part of our clean room. So that's, that's one, one, one great example. Some of the innovations that Snowflake is doing right now with aggregation constraints, projection constraints and all that, 
that is all we are bringing it all into our platform so i think it's a it seems like a match made in heaven to some extent because it's like you guys have the right primitives and we are looking at what clients are looking for and then it's just it just it just works yeah amazing so tell me about when a customer of yours doesn't have snowflake how does that work it depends most of our customers who don't have snowflake we help them because what we do is so for example if 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 you have snowflake and let's say i am a partner i don't have snowflake we will help these partners come on snowflake through external tables we'll allow the collaboration through external tables so that's what we will 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 help the partners sometimes these partners will work with that sometimes they will own the snowflake environment sometimes they will have us own it for a little while but this is how we help the partners come on the snowflake ecosystem makes total sense so what should your customers get most excited about over the next 6 to 12 months for your product that's a good question we are we are working on a whole bunch of different initiatives and obviously generative ai has taken you know the industry or i would say the entire world by storm uh, so we are working on a lot of things to make our end users life easier so for example i showed you the snowpark demo i showed you the sequel how can you make it easy for them let's say if you don't know sequel can you say hey i am looking for this can you change my sequel based on that can you change my code based on that so we are using the generative ai's power i also showed you alerts which is where lot of these things we are bringing to the platform our ultimate aim is to make collaboration super super simple we want to make it with a click of a button we don't want people to be writing code and thinking a lot about it we want it to be super simple that's what our goal is i love that vision and you know i love the fact that you talk about generative ai it really seems like the snowflake nvidia partnership bringing gpus directly into your workloads at snowflake is going to be a big game changer for you absolutely i think that's that's something that that you know i was at the summit and we were we were all very excited about that partnership and we would love to do more you know generative ai is something where everyone wants more and we would love to do more of that so where should people go to learn more about you and about habu yeah so you can go to our website habu habu.com and we are also in the snowflake marketplace so if you want to know or if you want to try out or if you want to check check us out please go there one click install that's right fantastic so rupak i want to thank you so much for joining me in the studio today it's been great learning all about the habu platform and the data cleaner product that you've built thank you thanks for inviting me this has been an absolute pleasure and everybody if you want to learn more about how to build your next application on snowflake be sure and check out developers.snowflake.com And if you want to see other technical interviews like this with technical leaders in the space, be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel. My name is Daniel Myers and this has been another episode of Powered by Snowflake. Thanks.